Hi, physics fans. What's up? I hope you've had a good start to your week. I know I have because One Punch Man Chapter 139 just dropped and it was incredible. Lots of lore drops and world building. We also got to see Blast for the first time in the present. Got a sneak peek of what he's capable of, like lifting a heavy cube. Nice. In this episode of Consider the Physics, we'll cover the physics surrounding Blast's appearance and also briefly discuss the chapter overall. You might be surprised by what he's capable of, so make sure you watch all the way through. Hey everyone, Fish here. I'll be talking about the physics of the cube and maybe touch on something that James mentioned earlier on. To understand the magnitude of the feet, we need to find the mass of the cube. To do that, we need to find its size. We can see the geometry from this scene. Using this handy shot of Saitama casually throwing the cube, we perform pixel scaling to get the exact dimensions for our analysis. With the help of the webcomic artist and author of One Punch Man, One, we finished out this panel. We can now pixel scale by comparing Saitama's height to the hypotenuse of the cube. We then use the Pythagorean theorem to get a side length of 0.14 meters. To initiate our density calculations for the cube, we notice the cube crushes the ground, which we assume to be granite. To start, we assume that the granite crushes via static compressive force, which is the strongest mode of failure for granite. One issue with using this method is that the compressive force often depends on the amount of material present, but according to recent research, which we link below, we found that for a high strength material like granite, the compressive strength is nearly independent of size. This allows us to use a simple pressure equation to find the mass needed to compress the granite to failure. We only need to use gravitational force in the area to do this, and we find that he effortlessly lifts a mass of 262 tons, which is on par with something Spider-Man can do while under duress. Huge. Going further about the cube, we find the density to be 100 million kilograms per cubic meter, which is 5,000 times more dense than the most dense element, osmium and approaches the density of a white dwarf. This implies that the cube is made of degenerate matter, most likely electron degenerate matter, and that it requires immense forces to maintain its shape. Hi folks, James here to tell you a little bit more about this cube. As Fish said, its density implies that it's made of degenerate matter. But what does that mean? And why is a lot of force needed to hold it together? As you may have learned in chemistry class, electrons have an intrinsic property called spin, which can be up or down. This is important because electrons occupy discrete energy levels. Maybe you've seen a diagram like this before. Due to the Pauli exclusion principle, only one electron of each spin can occupy the same energy level. In normal matter, electrons are able to move around more or less freely between energy levels, although much less so in solids. In degenerate matter, all the lower levels are filled because the material is so squished. This means that the electrons in the upper levels have an immense amount of energy, so something must be keeping them in place. For a white dwarf, which is made of electron degenerate matter, this is gravity. For a mass this small, the gravitational force would not be enough to keep it together, so there must be something else at play. The fact that it's also a cube is interesting because you would expect such a mass to form a sphere if compressed by something that can be approximated by a point force it would seem that there's an entirely different force at play here. So it's kind of interesting to think about. But at the end of the day, Blast can only hold a heavy cube that Spider-Man can lift, right? Well, we find out that he can actually manipulate black holes, which requires immense amounts of energy, much more than lifting a cube. Sorry, Spidey. With a few simple calculations, we can understand the masses and energy Blast can manipulate. From the pictured scene, we can see the size of the black hole he can make. Assuming a Schwarzschild black hole, we can rearrange this equation to find its mass. We use Saitama's height as the radius since he is not in the center of mass. Plugging in other constants, we find the mass is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 27th kilograms, which is nearly the mass of Jupiter. Using another well-known equation, we find the energy equivalence of the black hole to be 1 times 10 to the 44 joules, which is on the order of a type 1a supernova. 
This is the type of supernova that is caused by two stars colliding, creating an immense explosion. The mass of the black hole would increase the far field gravity to around 300 times that of Earth's, yet none of the characters are crushed, likely due to blast control of the gravitational fields. Also, stay tuned for a discussion with James and me. So that was a pretty crazy chapter. We got to see Blast, uh, Tatsumaki kicking some ass as well. Uh, I'm pretty interested by this cover art because you know you have the juxtaposition of the, I, I don't know if I would even call it juxtaposition, he's just cut in half of the astronaut. And then you know the person, I don't know if they're in a spacesuit or underwater, you have the tentacles kind of you know bringing forth a sort of Lovecraftian theme. So that's pretty interesting. I definitely agree, especially with the moon and the eye just juxtaposition. Like that is pretty creepy, honestly. But um, yeah, and it's actually beautiful art too. Like you know, it's pretty cool. I, I sort of want to know what the implication is with the eye and the moon. Like, uh, we, as because as we see in this episode, uh, Saitama and uh, Saitama and Blast are in a different dimension, right? So maybe there's some implication there. Possibly. What I'm kind of wondering, though, too, since Saitama made that hole in the moon, is it implying that the entity is watching Saitama? That's an interesting point as well. And also, I remember Sorry. earlier on in the anime, um, there, there's like this sort of, I don't know if it's foreshadowing, but they say it's almost like there's a god in his footsteps or like there's a god inhabiting Saitama's body. So I wonder if there's some something going on with that as well. Seems like a, a really weird thing for them to say, especially yeah. since. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, if he caught this being's attention, or maybe it could be imbuing him with powers too, just playing a game with humanity. Who knows? I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Saitama one punch it personally. And I mean, that that is that is going to be an interesting um, fight as well. And we also can't uh, forget the the wolf guy. I forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> watchdog man no no the the main the main anti protagonist the anti-hero oh, garu. garu there the we go yeah yeah he uh he's he's shaping up to look like he's pretty dangerous i mean he handled uh dark shine with that you know. uh let's talk about blast a little bit so we saw him come in uh using a black hole to transport himself it looks like he can create black holes at will uh, he's got infinity symbols on his on his gloves as well so kind of just tying into that singularity theme and no that, that's an interesting point and he doesn't seem to be very when he made that black hole he didn't seem to be very you know um tired out by it i mean this seemed pretty easy for him to do right i i just wonder yeah. what his power scale is yeah well we did the calculations i mean we you know assuming that he's creating this you know actually creating the mass for this black hole out of like energy reserves that he does inside of himself you know, he's, you know, he'd be on par with something like a supernova, which is absolutely insane. And it seems like his control of gravity is quite fine as well. And he also mentions that time is flowing slower where they are. So that's kind of interesting. Like, does he, does he sense that with his powers? Um, because as we know, if they're in a, like a smaller, or a, sorry, a, a large gravitational field, you know, time would appear to be going slower for them, you know, from the outside. I guess that leads into a finer point on whether he, if he can just control gravity or could he control like space time itself because ob obviously it's all interconnected, right? Yeah, that's true. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of wondering about that. Like, can he, you know, elongate things? Can he? Can he shrink? Can he teleport? I guess you, we do see him teleporting, so I guess he definitely has that power. But oh, no, yeah. that's true. Yeah, right. Like um, when you approach gravity, there's a lot of there's a lot of like distortion effects that happen. Not not just including time effects, but also uh, we have like cases of like spaghettification when like matter gets close to a black hole. So I wonder if he has those abilities as well. Yeah, he's he's obviously able to suppress it by allowing you know Satama, Monaco, and Flash get inside the event horizon. Um, but you know it definitely be interesting to see if he could use that ability offensively. I mean, he is the number number one hero, right? Like he surely should be able to use his abilities to some degree of the offense, right? Yeah, for sure. It's it's kind of funny to me that Saitama does not seem to be phased by him at all. 
you know, he, he doesn't even know who he is. So, you know, that's always pretty funny. And he didn't seem like he was that impressed by his speed either. So, you know, maybe, maybe Saitama's still on another level. That's true. I wonder about the other way around. I wonder if Blast knows about Saitama's power level. He seems to be pretty... I mean, you, you'd you wonder if someone of that power would be able to tell if another person has um, power as well. But in the case of, like, Tatsumaki, she, she wasn't able to see Saitama's power level, doesn't really understand, so maybe it's hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that we've really seen be able to tell his power level right off the bat was Carnage Kabuto, who was, you know, his anal instinct just made him immediately afraid of Saitama. Um, I think Bang had some idea as well, but that's about all we've seen. I mean, there's no indication that Blast, uh, you know, sort of acknowledges Saitama. He only addresses Flashy Flash, so that could possibly imply that, you know, he doesn't recognize Saitama's power. Well, that being said, he did um, invite Saitama to go into the Event Horizon, but perhaps that's just to save, save Saitama's life, not... Um acknowledging him as an equal i guess we'll yeah, have to see yeah, he let the monster in too i think he was just teleporting them out of there oh. i guess i guess a hero saves everyone right or should uh, you, would, you would hope <laughs> looks like he's just going around collecting cubes right now i mean we love someone who tries to 100 percent anything really a collector <laughs> yeah uh we also got a little bit of character growth with child emperor uh, in this episode as well and some interesting paneling with sweet mask and zombie man as well like a like a slight parallel so that's kind of interesting too i don't know what that means but you know they're definitely like you know have the same sort of expression uh sweet mask looks a little bit you know he's like squinting his eyes a little bit and then we see zombie man just get completely obliterated by homeless emperor Oh yeah, that was an interesting. See, it's it's just weird how you could have like these like complete, almost completely separate storylines just on different levels. Because obviously Saitama and um, Blast being just vastly superior to all the other heroes that we know of. It's it's just an interesting um, juxtaposition, I suppose. Yeah, for because, sure. Because they're having this massive battle outside. Like Genos is at his limit. Um, I, I mean, they're just. They're just that. I mean, they're at the brink of like winning, losing. Yet Saitama is just chilling. Uh, yeah, blast. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it, it really this is happening because King hasn't shown himself yet. So we're waiting for that to happen. That will definitely turn the tides. That's true. We we haven't really heard of the King Canon or the King uh, the King beat or whatever for a while now. So yeah, that's true. Maybe we'll see. We'll hear it in the next episode. Maybe it'll be enough to even disrupt the black holes of Event Horizon from Blast. <laughs> we just have to see. <laughs> have to see. Um, so anyway, thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope the calculations were able to elucidate, you know, what was going on in the scene and give you some context of Blast's power. We'll be doing another Consider the Physics episode uh, sometime either during the weekend or a little bit after once we get, you know, some votes in and we understand what you guys want to see. So make sure you vote. And tune in next time. Also remember to hit the like button and uh, smash that subscribe button as well. All right. Bye. Bye.